the 108 win 1986 New York Met team played the 114 win 1998 Yankees team in the World Series, who would win and why? The 86 team. Yep. <laughs> No question about it. I mean, the Yankee team was good, but they were a bunch of milk drinkers. <laughs> the 86 Mets wasn't milk drinkers. So we, um, we were just a pretty good team. We, what happened was from 85, 84, when we lost to the Cubs, lost out to the Cubs, and then we came back in 85 and we lost out to the Cardinals. Then 86, we came into spring training and our first meeting with Davey Johnson was that we're going to win it all and we're going to dominate. And we kind of looked around at each other and we thought, yeah, this is our year. And that's exactly what we went out and did during the course of that season. And everybody said, well, you got lucky in the playoffs. No, we didn't get lucky. We beat Houston and we came back and we beat Boston for the World Series and the championship because there's no luck when you got two outs. You know, it, it, you either going to get a hit or you're not. And we ended up getting hits after hits, and then the greatest player of all time, Buckner Wilson. You know, everybody talks about it all the time. But that team, that, that team um, just had so much swag about them, had so much character about them, ourselves, and we had so much belief about ourselves. We had in-house fighting, but if you catch us in a place like this in a bar and you mess with one of us, the whole team was going to get in trouble. That's just the way we were. We wouldn't leave, we wouldn't leave nobody behind because we, we had each other back. And that's what I'm so proud about that team, uh, of how we ha always had each other back and how we cared about each other more than anything. Favorite player today? Who do you respect the most, th the way they play the game today? Well, I, I think the kid Harper from um, Washington, the kid from the Angels, Trout, you know, they, they, play, they play extremely well. they multi-talented players. I don't really watch a lot, I mean, but these guys, these guys have the tools to do a lot of different things. Uh, most players today are not like that, but these two guys I, I see doing uh, a lot of great things on the baseball field that re kind of reminds me of what it was like back when we were playing. They can hit, they can run, they can throw, they can steal bases, they know how to run the bases. You know, you can do all the things. And, you know, today you don't really see a lot of players. I mean, I see more players uh, lifting weights all the time, you know, just to hit home runs, and everybody wants to be a home run hitter, I guess. Um, and they lift too many weights, and now all of a sudden, all they do is pull hamstrings and uh, you know back muscles, and you know because they're too big, you know, and that's not for baseball. And I see these guys, and these guys got nice size on them, but it, it looks like they take care of themselves and they don't get themselves overweighted and stuff like that, and they, and they play the game the right way. I'm Aaron Judge. Talk to me. What do you tell them? Look, I would tell you, Aaron Judge. This is what I would tell you. Enjoy New York, but take care of yourself. Get your rest. Be clean. Go look at the highlights and the videotapes of a guy that plays shortstop there, number two, Derek Jeter. He played for 20 years, never got in any trouble. That's what you want to do. You want to keep, you want to stay single, have all the beautiful women you want, do whatever you want, but take care of yourself. Stay out of the nightlife. And that's what I would tell them. Stay out of the nightlife. Nightlife, and remember, you're a baseball player, because if you don't stay out of the nightlife in New York City, you're going to find yourself in a lot of trouble. I always hear this about pictures. Pictures, you know, they were saying, this next guy here is going to be just as good as Dwight Gooden. No, they're not. No, they're not. You will never, ever, ever see a guy at 19, 20 years old pitch the way Dwight Gooden pitched for the New York match. You will never, ever see that again. He was lights out. What was it like to play behind him? Huh? What was it like to be in the ballpark that night? What was it like to be behind it was, it, it was, a lot of times it was pretty boring. Because <laughs> nobody was ever getting hits, you know. It was just like, it was like, Doc, light up on him, man. Let somebody get a hit. Let's just a hit, a single or something. Because you never got action out in the outfield. It was like every time you looked up, he had two strikes on people. And, and there that guy was up in the corner with the K corner. He was back and forth, back and forth. And the, the crowd's up. And I'm standing up there looking. And I was like, man, this is I sometimes, I mean, I loved it. But like I said, sometimes I said, Doc, this is not fun, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what would have happened if, let's say, you, 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 forget Doc for a second, started your career in Kansas City? What do you think, what do you think would have happened? Whatever. Well, I, I, I would have probably been drinking a lot of milk. 
I don't think so. Yeah, I'm playing in Kansas City. You know, there's not a whole lot to do. You know, I, you know, I'm coming to New York, 21, and I get a, get in the big leagues at 21, win, win rookie of the year, get an eight million dollar contract. Now all of a sudden, I'm playing in the greatest place that a player can play at the highest level. And what happens? You know, I get in the lifestyle. I get in the lifestyle of, of women, womanizer. I get in the lifestyle of alcohol. I get in the lifestyle of drugs. I get in the lifestyle of amphetamines. You know. And that's just the way I learned to live. You see, what happened to me is most people don't know. They just saw me as a player and the talent I had, but they don't know I was broken before I put the uniform on. You know, my dad was an alcoholic and he beat the crap out of me and said I would never mount to nothing when I was 14 years old, 13, 14 years old. Then he came home, pulled out a shotgun, and said he was going to kill the whole family. And me and my brothers went into action and we almost killed my father. So there could have been a tragedy in my life before. I ever put the uniform on. I was already broken when I put it on. And what happened was my pain led me to my greatness. And my greatness would eventually lead me to my destructive behavior because I hated my father and I was not, never happy inside. I was a baseball player, but I wasn't a man. And that, that's what really happened to me. You know, I played baseball. I knew how to play baseball because I was in pain. And I, I, I drilled myself to play baseball when I saw Pete Rose was my idol. And when I saw him play for the Cincinnati Reds and I saw him play, I said, I want to play baseball just like this guy. He didn't have all the talent in the world, but he was Charlie Hustle. And I saw him hustle and dive into bases and, and run down to first base. I said, this guy is a baseball player. And I said, that's what I want to do. When I was 13, 14 years old, I wrote it on the door after my dad, my mom got my dad out of the house. I wrote it on the door. I'm going to the pros. I had made my mind up. I was going to the pros. So I'm Matt Harvey. I've had a couple of rough years after starting out pretty high. What's the pep talk you give me? What do you well, say besides, would, besides that? What do you say? I would tell Matt, I would say, listen, right now you, you got to shut it down. You got to stay out of the nightlife. You got to stay out of the bars. You got to stay off, stay off the Twitter, stay off the Instagram with the pictures, stay off of uh, the girls. You know, you want to date all the hot girls, and you, but you've done it all wrong because what happened is you already exposed yourself to – everybody that you're out hanging out and partying and, and, and you're having problems on the mound. You know, and people are, going, people are going to respond to the problems that you're having on the mound because you're a baseball player and you need to try something different. You, you're doing things wrong. And uh, that's what I would tell him. You know, you need to slow down and, and you need to focus. You got a chance to be a great pitcher, but it doesn't happen overnight. It's Nolan Ryan, man, I used to think when I first started facing Nolan, my heart used to be beating on the on-deck circle. Boom, 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 boom. It's like, it's like I had to calm myself down. It's like, man, this is Nolan Ryan. He's going, if you, Nolan Ryan had this demeanor on his face that was different than anybody I ever faced. He was just like different. He, he had this, oh, he used to stand on the monitor. Remember how he used to, he used to walk around it, you know. Big old country boy. He'd walk around and he'd stand on it. He'd look at you like this. And it was a, it was a sign in his face that says, don't dig in. <laughs> you know, because everybody, everybody else I would dig in on. It was like, don't dig in, because Nolan would knock you down. He would throw under your chin and stuff like that. And you, you could ask Robin Ventura, just go back to the highlights. <laughs> <laughs> we came into spring training, and our first meeting with Davey Johnson was that we're going to win it all, and we're going to dominate. And we kind of looked around at each other, and we thought, yeah, this is our year. And that's exactly what we went out and did during the course of that season. And everybody said, well, you got lucky in the playoffs. No, we didn't get lucky. We beat Houston, and we came back, and we beat Boston for the World Series and the championship. Because there's no luck when you got two outs. You know, it, it, you either going to get a hit or you're not. And we ended up getting hits after hits. And then the greatest player of all time, Buckner Wilson. You know, everybody talks about it all the time. But that team, that, that team um, just had so much swag about them, had so much character about them, ourselves, and we had so much belief about ourselves. We had in-house fighting, but if you catch us in a place like this in a bar and you mess with one of us, the whole team was going to get in trouble. I remember one time me and one of my teammates, it was a day game, we went out in the city, and me and him, he's a pitcher, and he didn't have to play and we went out, and we came out of the club. It was 8 o'clock in the morning. We got a day game. And I'm saying, what are we doing now? He said, well, let's go to my place for a minute and we're rest. We went there and laid down for an hour. I came, and then we came to the ballpark. I got to the ballpark. I got in the whirlpool, took me a couple greens, and drank me some coffee. 
Didn't take no batting practice. Game start. First at bat, I get up. I hit a bullet in the alley. And, 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 and I, get, I run and get a triple. Slide into third. And my head is throbbing. And I look over in the dugout. He, he's standing over there with his hat on the dugout. And he's going. <laughs> After I come back in, he goes, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> he was just amazed. I said, this baseball. You know, this never changes. You know, no matter what I do, I go out or whatever. I know I'm going to come back and I'm going to be on the field and I'm going to play because this is baseball. This part of me will never change. But the other part is what I struggle with more than anything uh, is the life part of being a man. Your attitude is you have no regrets that you were, the biggest difference you were supposed to make is the work you're doing now and not on the ball field. And this is the way it's supposed to be. And, and it's not bullshit. You really live with no regret. So how, do you, how did you get to that point? Well... I don't live with any regrets because when I look back on it, man, I had so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, life is just one chance, one shot, and I really had fun. I really had the fun part of what I wanted to do was playing. But the greatest part of playing for me was I got to play in New York City. You know, and I don't jive about that, guys. I mean, I played everywhere else in towns. They just, ugh. They think they got the greatest fans. I was like, you guys have no idea what fans are like until you play in front of New York fans. 